this is our teenage adoption story. So we were a family of four, my wife and I, and we had no, no, four or five. <laughs> After a while, there's twins. Yeah. <laughs> so we were a family of five, uh, my mm -hmm. wife and I, um, our daughter Abby, and then we have twin boys, Andrew and Isaac. We had a tremendous amount of friends that were doing international adoption, and that was not for us. We knew that wasn't what we were going to do. Um, but everything from then started, I was behind a car that had a foster care plastic license plate. Um, it was in the podcast I was listening to. It was uh, at the end of chapter two um, in Forgotten God by Francis Chan. In all of those things, it was about foster care and adoption. And it just started to ruin me. Uh, so I started looking up um, Iowa Kids Net. Mm -hmm. um, and then I asked Ron about it. Yeah. <laughs> I was resistant. I work for a school district and so I have seen um, maybe the darker side of the, those stories and um, how much brokenness is in that situation. So I was struggling to uh, feel the same calling for a while. And so I said, tell you what, read this book and then tell me what you think. And then you read it. Yeah, I read it. And I was convicted that this is something that we were definitely being called to do. Yeah, and a lot of it was so that we weren't we weren't going to live out of fear. That all your reasons for no were fear based. Yep. So we weren't going to do things out of fear. And then we said, okay, let's sign up for classes. Let's do the classes and see what happens. So we got our license. Yep, we got licensed, and we made a room with a crib for that baby. Yes, changing table, for yeah. the baby. Yeah. Um, and then we weren't getting a lot of phone calls. The phone calls were for sibling groups, yeah. um, but by the time like we would call back and inquire more, they were they were fostered out. So that was great. Um, and then Christmas, Thanksgiving rolled by, and then Christmas was coming, and we weren't getting phone calls. And I thought, okay, God, this was supposed to be abundantly clear what we were doing. Um, and we weren't getting a phone call. And then uh, December twenty eighth, uh, we got a phone call for a 12-year-old girl uh, with no behavioral problems. <laughs> Just kind of funny. I don't know that 12-year-old girls don't have behavioral problems, but... Um, so I, we were playing a board game, and so I had Ron call back to Iowa Kids and then ask some more questions, and we asked the, our other three children what they think about having a 12-year-old girl, um, and they were very excited about it. Uh, Abby loved the idea of having an older sister. And uh, Isaac said, finally, because it is almost, we're coming up on a year of that process. And Andrew said, fine. <laughs> um, so you called them back yep. to find out the rest of the story. I asked them every question I could think of to ask. And doggone, I was not a no. I, I just knew that God was saying, this is, this is the one. Yeah, which is funny, because <laughs> I was too, which was completely nothing like what we thought. It was nothing like anything anybody told us. We were working out of birth order. Um, and then they asked us to, uh, they asked us to come and look at her. Was that what they? Yeah, to interview her and then you can decide and we're like, no, we're not going to go meet this young lady. And if we choose that it's not, we didn't want her to feel like that there was something she did or didn't do that mm -hmm. was a yes or a no. So we were like, if it's a yes, then it's a yes. Yeah. Before I was adopted, I was born in Colorado. And for the most part, I grew up in the bars. I lived with my grandma, who raised me. Um, my mom was a drug addict and um, an alcoholic, as of all of my biological family. And so I moved to Iowa. Um, it was my grandpa's attempt to help me out. But with him being an alcoholic as well, it went downhill really fast. Um, he had a heart attack and I temporarily moved out and lived with my best friend at the time in fifth grade and um, her family ended up moving to Colorado and I couldn't go with them and so I then just jumped between different friends and homes and people that I met and I uh, transferred schools at sixth grade and met different people and lived with them for a year and they moved our um, different things like I just left and so um, when I was in seventh grade I uh, decided to go on a joy ride in my grandpa's car because I ended up staying with him for a couple months again 
and um, so the cops pulled pulled us over. I was with some other friends, and being 12, you can't drive a car. So then they took me to the police station, and this is where my journey kind of began for foster care. And um, I ended up at a youth detention center for a couple of days with. Uh, there was no showering, uh, you had to do chores, um, watched a really scary movie, was traumatized. So, um, so then, three days later, I am, there's, the rooms are cells, like, you have to knock to get out and knock to get back in, and I was, like, sitting in my room because I didn't leave because it was scary, and, like, this is the first time I had ever experienced something like that, and, uh, it's the lady told me that these people are gonna like come pick me up and I'm gonna leave and I was like okay so then I go and I, all I have of my personal belongings are in a garbage bag and so I show up to this home that and to these people that I've never met before and um, they they're really welcoming they're um, loving and uh, very excited more excited than I was and I was scared. I um, was shaking, and like it was, it was probably the scariest thing that's ever happened because going into a home where you don't know who they are, but you're going to be living with them for the next couple of months, you think, um, was like unsettling almost. But then I warmed up to them, and they were really funny, and we played a lot of headbands, like the game, so that was fun. And then, um, I did struggle though because I they had structure they had chores and curfews and I had to go to church and those are things that I had never had to do before and so after I was there they my lawyer had started talking about adoption and so I at first I was like no like that's not for me it's okay but after realizing that my mom who still a drug addict still an alcoholic, still has issues. Um, she can't care for me and my grandpa has health problems as well. Um, he has like dementia and he can't remember a lot of stuff half of the time like he wouldn't be able to care for me. So just after accepting that and realizing that um, this is so much better and I'm getting love here like I've never been loved before and um, they actually want me around. They care for me and I decided to go through with the adoption and so then I get adopted and um, ever since then I've been just like I got to know God and I went on church trips and it was just really cool. So I'm going to be attending a college and this is I'm pretty sure I'm like the first one in my family to even go to college and um that probably wouldn't have happened if Ron and Karen didn't step up and like take me in and um, I just just to be blessed by them was something that is just it's a miracle like I my life like I shouldn't be in this place like I shouldn't be living with them so I'm thankful that the path that God led me to ended up leading me to Ron and Karen so looking back on my original fears about um, fostering and adopting and the darker side of that, and especially uh, with kids that are a little older, um, having Lauren come and be in her house and ultimately adopting her as our own um, helped, uh, helped me realize that there's this huge need, first of all, um, and that uh, through conversations and talking and open communication, um, it can be done and it can be done well. And, um, it was a wonderful uh, learning experience for, for all of us, I think. Yeah, for sure. I think God, God laid this 12-year-old girl in front of us, and uh, one of the big things for us is to be faithful to what's in front of us. Um, and God gave us a 12-year-old girl when we were expecting a baby, and it's, uh, it's been the greatest thing for us.